Hello, welcome to Dit Dot. My name's Amanda. Today I'm really excited because I'm finally checking off a bucket list item. I have always wanted to make tamales. I love eating them, but for some reason in my head, they've been this like ooh, all day, huge, big, complicated project. I have made dishes that are just as complicated, but for some reason, tamales have remained in that like mysterious, like, ooh, too complicated thing. I was flipping through this cookbook and it's um, William Sonoma, which I love, and it is endorsed by Instapot. I got this book at the library and there is a tamale recipe in here and it seemed pretty approachable. Now in true Amanda fashion, do I ever follow a recipe? Uh, no. So in my mind, <laughs> this is a suggestion. So I have a lot of theory about tamales. I've watched lots of videos growing up. I love eating them, like I said. So this could be a very big epic fail, but we're gonna have fun and let's get cooking. The first thing that I'm going to change is this recipe calls for three fourths pound of pork. And that's not very much. And if I'm gonna go to this much trouble, I don't wanna make like a huge amount of tamales today because I just wanna dabble, kind of see what the process is like, and then maybe if it goes well, then work on making a lot more. But I am going to go ahead and make up this entire thing, which is closer to three pounds. And whatever meat I don't use, I will repurpose in like burritos or whatever like that. But if I'm gonna go to the trouble of, you know, cooking some pork low and slow, I'm gonna just go ahead and do this whole thing. It says to cut it up and sear it in the Instapot. Well, I have learned that I love the Instapot sear function for like small chicken breast or, you know, sauteing onions and things like that. But if I wanna sear a big chunk of meat, I actually like to just go ahead and get a cookie sheet out and put it under the broiler for a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Also, it calls for pork shoulder and I couldn't really find that. And so I got a pork loin, but this loin still has a pretty good amount of fat on it. So I think it'll be a reasonable substitute. So I'm gonna go ahead and put salt and pepper on both sides. <laughs> and drizzle it with some just avocado oil that I have. And then, I, yeah, I'm just gonna put this under the broiler. I'll watch it and then flip it over. So I got out my big Instapot here and I am putting on the saute feature so that I can go ahead and do the onions while my pork is over there in the oven. So the original recipe called for just one onion because it wasn't that much meat, but I am gonna go ahead and use two. Probably should use three, but two is what I have in my pantry. I didn't realize I was so low on onions. My goodness already. So I actually grew up in Houston, Texas, and then I lived in Dallas for 10 years. So I'm quite familiar with tamales. I've eaten them all throughout my life. They weren't always my first choice when I was a kid for some reason. When we'd go to Mexican restaurants, I guess I did what a lot of kids did and stuck with like quesadillas and burritos. But now I do enjoy getting tamales. Oh, these onions are making my eyes water. Yellow onions, this is a yellow onion. Yellow onion doesn't usually make my eyes water as much as a white onion, but this one is pretty strong. One thing that's pretty funny is, you know, sometimes I'll buy frozen tamales. They actually have some really good ones at my health food store that are like small batch homemade tamales in the freezer section. And when I bought the frozen tamales and cooked them, because it's just a reheat process at that point, I have gone to the time to make a homemade chili sauce. Well, today, since I'm kind of just focusing on these tamales, I'm actually using a jarred sauce, which is so wrong, but it is what it is. Oh my goodness. My eyes are like very wa uh, watery right now. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these onions in. I actually think that the saute feature on the big Instapot is better than the one on my mini. I have a mini Instapot that I use more often. I think it takes longer for it to get up to heat. And we'll pull out 
Let's see how look, it's getting that good brown color. So we'll pull this out, flip it over and get some color on the other side. So the recipe I'm following does not have garlic in it. And I feel like that is quite a mistake. So I'm adding four cloves of garlic. It does have garlic powder, which I will also add, but I like to double up my, I like to add garlic, fresh garlic and garlic powder a lot of times to dishes. So I'm just giving it a rough chop because this is going to cook down and kind of disappear into the sauce. So I have a couple cans of green chilies. Oh, I opened that one upside down. <laughs> so just diced green chilies that I'm gonna go ahead and add the original recipe just called for one, but again, you know, making more. So a lot of times when you go to double or triple a recipe, you don't necessarily have to scale it completely up and down. Depends. And I'm talking about cooking, not baking. Baking is a whole nother creature. <laughs> Now you see how my Instant Pot's got all this steam? A lot of times you'll see me take my seasonings and kind of just do that over a pot or something. But when it's steaming this much, the steam will get into my seasoning and make it clump and spoil faster. I'm actually using a spoon this time. So that was garlic and here is cumin powder. Oh, I love the smell of cumin. So I just pulled this pork loin out of the oven. It's got gorgeous color on it. I'm going to just kind of fold it down into my Instapot and I want to go ahead and make sure I add this extra fat that rendered off. Ooh, nice. Man, that was quite a bit of it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the saute and add some more salt and pepper and then about a cup or so, maybe a cup and a half of chicken stock, a little bit more. It says to cook under pressure for an hour, but because I've got a lot more meat in here and I didn't cube it up, I'm gonna actually go for an hour and a half and then check on it. Okay, so we will throw the lid on it, hit the meat and poultry. I want it to go for 90 minutes, so I'm gonna go up to 90 and then we will give it a check later. Here's Watson, hey Watson. Are you cooking some tamales with me? I almost forgot. So while the pork is cooking, we need to rehydrate our corn husk. Apparently you can use fresh corn too, or banana leaves, but I was able to pick these up. So I got a really big bowl with some water. I've never used these before, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of, mm, getting a call. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in here, cover this with some more water, try to work the water down in, and then I'm gonna weight it down with a, oh, I'm gonna have to get a smaller lid, but I'm gonna weight it down with a lid and maybe put some cans on top to make sure that they stay under the water. Okay, so I cooked it for the 90 minutes and then I pulled it out because I wanted to make sure it would just shred apart. And look at this, it's just like fall apart tender. And then now I've got all of this liquid that I'm going to strain. It smells so amazing in here. I am like, it's making me so hungry. So I've got just a large strainer over a big measuring cup. I'm gonna save some of this liquid. I think I might have more than what will fit in this cup. Maybe not, we'll see. And then I'm gonna put the chilies back in with the beef. Just barely. I've seen some of the videos took these chilies and onions and actually pureed it before adding it back to their meat. It's so squishy that I'm just going to go ahead and add it in like this. I kinda need a bigger bowl. Isn't that how cooking always goes though? You always grab the wrong size bowl. Okay, so for now I put the pork behind us and we're gonna start working on the mesa. This is the part I've never done. I mean, cause I've made pork for burritos or I mean, lots of different recipes I can't think of right now. Now, most 
Most tamales are made with lard. And if you can find pasture-raised farm lard, then I totally would do that. Most lard on grocery store shelves has been hydrogen hydrogenated. And I personally choose to try to avoid fats that have been hydrogenated. They are one of the fats that suspect, you know, aren't in the healthier types of fats. Lard itself is actually a really good fat for you. It has actually really good vitamins, but once they process it in that way to make it more shelf stable, it, from the research that I've done, I don't feel comfortable using it. I did look to see if you could replace butter because like in pie doughs and things like that, a lot of times you can use straight up butter. And I did come across a couple recipes that said you could. I could not find out if it was like replace equal amounts. So we're gonna start with equal amounts. I've got some uh, room temperature butter. I also read you could use duck fat or beef tallow or yeah, I was gonna say or pork fat, but that would be lard. <laughs> So one of the hints that I read about was, especially if you were gonna use butter, but even if you were using lard, is to bring it up to room temperature and then whip it. So we're gonna do that. I mean, it doesn't look like it's changing any, so I'm gonna just go with that. So I went ahead and used two thirds cup of butter because that's what it said for the lard. And now I'm going to add in four cups of the masa mix, which is, I'm just going with Quaker because that's what they had at my grocery store. Oh my gosh, it smells like tamales already. <laughs> I guess because that's in my head, right? Okay, so I've got four cups of the masa, set that aside and one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. It's supposed to help make them lighter and fluffier. Look at that, I measured, I measured, and I'm sort of following a recipe, but not really because I changed stuff, right? Okay, then it is requiring salt, which I'm not measuring. <laughs> Kinda, I loosely measured it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some of this butter incorporated before I add the liquid, and it just says to use four cups of water, but I'm gonna use this liquid that we poured off from our pork. I, I question, I'm like, why is someone gonna watch me when there's other YouTubers who can tell you how to do it? But I personally find it interesting to watch people who are learning something new. And so, because I might make some of the same mistakes that you make if this is something you've never done before. And if you have, and you have a family secret recipe of tamales, oh my goodness, please, please comment below. Now here's the thing, this came out of really hot Instant Pot, so, and I do need to be able to work this from my hands, but I have no patience. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time here. I have no patience, and I don't wanna wait for it to cool down, so I hope that doesn't affect anything. Oh my gosh, guys, this smells amazing. Why have I not made tamales before? I ask you this. Oh my gosh. They said that it needs to be about the texture of Play-Doh, really loose Play-Doh. So I'm just incorporating this in with my spoon right now because this liquid, like I said, is super hot. I wonder if I could use my mixers for this. I don't think so. I think you wanna do this by hand because we don't wanna over mix it. And this dry corn will keep absorbing some of the liquid. I wonder if you could taste this. I wonder what it tastes like. I'm going to taste it. Okay, let's see. I'm just going to taste it. I mean, I know it's raw dough, but mmm, no, it's got a good flavor. Because that's the thing, like, I wanted to make sure my batter tastes good. All right, now I am going to go ahead and use my hands to kind of massage this some more. Let me take off my ring. By the way, anybody who is curious, um, <laughs> I lost a lot of weight, and so my wedding rings don't fit anymore. So the other day at the store, they had like costume jewelry, and I decided, hey, why not? It'd be fun. So if in a lot of videos, most videos, you won't see my wedding rings. And then the last couple, I think, I've worn the costume jewelry just for fun, but I'm not one of those people who really cares. Oh, this is warm about wedding rings that much. I do hope to get mine resized one of these days, but 
it's not a super high list priority. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. Now I know why some people have used gloves. Okay, this is actually feeling really good. I mean, I don't know what it's supposed to feel like, but I feel like it's nice and fluffy and it's smooth feeling. So we're gonna say that this is nice incorporated. And like I said, my taste, little taste test there tasted good. It tasted like it had enough salt and flavor. Get this off my fingers, wash it, and then we'll try to uh, shred up that pork and make us some tamales. <laughs> there was no way I was gonna be able to shred this pork in that tiny bowl. So I took my corn husks out there in front of me and now I'm using my big bowl that I had them soaking in. And it dawned on me that this is how I shred chicken. And so I thought it might work for the pork too. And it works great. So I've got my pork in here and this works on hot meat. I've showed this before on my channel, but if you're new here, this is a, just a really good trick for shredding up different types of hot meat that you cooked down to this texture. Okay, now that I've got this shredded, I went ahead and tasted it and I forgot, I wanted to add some fresh cilantro. So I've got a bunch of cilantro that I chopped up and I think it needs a little bit more salt. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more salt. Mm. Mm. This is really good. It's very mild. I've said it a million times before. I love spicy food, but my, the rest of my family doesn't. So I'm keeping the spice out of this and you know, you could add more spice on the sauce, but if you like spice, instead of those mild green chilies, you know, using a spicier chili would be perfect. Now let's see if we can make our first tamale. So they say that there's a rough side and a smooth side. So let's see. They feel very similar to me. I would say that this side is slightly smoother. So I'm gonna use that side. I saw a couple of tricks. One was for like the, the experts, they just used their spoon, kind of smeared it down. And then some people use some saran wrap to help get this on here. Mine is not wanting to stick. I'm sure this takes practice, just like anything, right? We're gonna call that, are we? <laughs> I'm like, stick, dang it, stick. I feel like there's not enough down here. I feel like that's pretty good. We'll see. And then just a little bit of the pork. And then I always overstuff things. Bring it together and then fold it and then fold it. No, I don't think I did it tight enough. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Like, okay, so I've got a seam there, but this is my first tamale, guys. This is my first <laughs> tamale. And then I'm just, I'm not gonna do the wrappy thing because I don't have patience for that kind of thing. Uh, I kind of overstuffed it, so I hope it doesn't come out the top too much. I was hoping while the pork was cooking, I was trying to convince my husband to go look at treadmills with me. We've been talking about it on and off I've been walking 10,000 steps a day and I'm doing it like in place while I'm watching TV or, you know, when the weather's nice, going on walks around the neighborhood. And I'm to the point where I've been doing this for over a year, 10,000 steps a day. And so I really would like a treadmill, but we'll see. We're looking at it. We're doing the research. He doesn't want to jump into it. And that's, I mean, they're expensive. I, I agree with him that we should take our time and research it. Okay. Oh, come on. This is quite difficult. <laughs> I gotta get my technique down. Maybe I'll try the plastic. Oh, I feel like that's too much. I do that with raviolis too. I always overstuff them. Here's another big old fat tamale. I got some fat tamales. Here, let me do one more with the plastic wrap and then we'll see which method works best. Okay, for us beginners, right? We're going to smear it down. I think they said about one third cup and then Use plastic, oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot better. Of course my, my, okay. So for us beginners, let's do this method. That made it a whole lot easier. We'll leave the other method. This is a really big corn husk to the expert tamale makers. Seriously though, if you've got somebody in your 
community that makes homemade tamales, appreciate them and buy from them and support them because it's a lot of work and it's they're so 17, maybe 18. It looks like maybe 18 here. I got them kind of all stacked up here right now. I'm, I am making very large tamales. The recipe said with the four cups of masa, it would make 16. And mine are very fat and big tamales. I think they're a little oversized. So honestly, I think you could get a lot more. I'm finding that this plastic method, plastic wrap method is definitely a good way to go for someone who is not an expert at tamales. It's hard to see the contrast there. I just, while I'm making up these last couple, I wanted to invite everyone to follow me over on Instagram. I'm also dit dot, D-I-T-T, D-O-T-T, -T, over on Instagram. And on Instagram, I post a lot more food, fun recipes that I kind of do throughout the week that I don't necessarily post to YouTube. And I also talk a lot more about my health and fitness journey over on Instagram and post pictures of cute old Watson down there. You can also, you know, send me DMs or whatnot over on Instagram. If you've got questions, I'm definitely not an expert. I'm a dabbler. Mm, sorry, that was kind of gross, but you know, I'm cooking for my family. I, my sister this morning actually even texted me and she's like, you're just a little, what do they call it? Jack of all trades, master of none. That's true. I dabble in a lot of things. Okay, so I just rinsed out the Instapot. I didn't give it a good clean because, I mean, why does it matter? And I'm pouring in a cup of water and then we're going to try to stack these tamales together. Hmm, they're a little taller than my, my trivet is a little too tall. Hold on, I'm gonna grab a different trivet. Okay, so this is the trivet that comes with the mini Instapot, but because it's got such giant spaces, I'm gonna just put that, and because I lost the foot, the feet to this one. So we're gonna combine these two colanders and then go ahead and stack up Oh, y'all all better fit here. So that's a good point. If you're gonna use your Instapot more than the 16 that the recipe calls for, probably barely fits, so. Okay, I got them in here, they'll fit. It said to do it 40 minutes, but because I've got this packed pretty darn tight, I'm gonna go ahead and up it by 10, well, five minutes, I'll do 45 minutes on it. Cause you know, again, that's how I fly. All right, so lid on. Ceiling position, manual, 40 minutes, 45. We're gonna go up five more because I, I really had that tightly packed in there. And then we're gonna let this cook and let it do a natural release for 10 minutes, it says, and then we will be able to let them cool and have a taste. So make sure you stay around for the tasting. But I'm also, I'm gonna, I'll find this book on Amazon and I'll link it below in the description box. I don't feel like I could write the recipe down in my description box. I think that would be a little bit too much like plagiarism, but um, I have changed quite a bit about it because, <laughs> you know, that's our role. But there's a lot of really interesting things in here that I do want to look at and um, try like, corn chowder. I love chowders. And, oh, I'm a sucker for anything Thai. A Thai chicken noodle bowl. Yes, sign me up. So I will, like I said, link this down below and you can try it out. Oh my gosh, guys, should I make these? These sesame green onion short ribs. I mean, that looks amazing. <laughs> All right, we will be back in, well, for you a split second for me it'll be like an hour okay i lied i'm actually right back because i'm on a facebook food group where we just talk about food and stuff like that in general and someone was posting they said recipes should show how messy the kitchen is after you make them and i was looking around and i'm like hey i actually didn't do too bad so i'm gonna show you so i already had some dirty dishes from this morning but you know like i got the the colander and this dirty and yeah, like this was from something else, but cutting board, a couple of bowls plus, hi Watson, 
you and your sun puddle, plus this big bowl right here and this leftover pork because, you know, again, I made more than the recipe required, but I'm gonna freeze this and use it for like burritos or something. And then, you know, this is the sheet pan that we roasted with in the beginning. I feel like I didn't do that bad. So, hey, for a whew, almost half day process of making tamales. Okay, I opened up the Instapot and the masa is firm and they are looking good. You might hear Watson's nails go clippy, clippy, clippy. When I opened this up, he, he wants some. He says, this smells amazing. And he's like, where is mine? Sorry, buddy, this is people food. I'm really excited to try my first homemade tamale. So it's been a day, guys, like hair up. I went on a long walk while this was cooking. I am hot, but it's been fun. It's been fun. I did check on it after 45 minutes and the masa was still sticky. So I put the lid back on and did it for another 15 minutes and now it's nice and firm. Let's give this a taste. I'm not gonna taste it with the sauce right now because see, I can even pick this whole thing up. Um, because I, I didn't make a homemade sauce, so we're just gonna taste it straight up as a tamale. So let's see how it looks when I cut it open. So this was one of the smaller ones that I did with a like normal size amount of pork in there. <laughs> okay, let's take a TV bite, polite size. I, Oh man, that's good. Mm. I love how I cut it with my fork and then picked it up with my fingers to eat. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I want to cry. <laughs> like I really want to cry because we can do hard things. Like, I don't know why I thought this was gonna be such a hard thing. Like I've made dinners that are way more complicated, but for some reason, doesn't make sense. I had tamales were outside of my reach. Bucket list guys, I just made homemade tamales and they are phenomenal. I am so, so proud of myself. <laughs> so, well, if y'all made it this far in the journey, I am so thankful that you stuck it out with me. And it was so much fun trying something new with all of you. If you have not hit the subscribe button, please do. I love to have fun in the kitchen. A lot of times I'm cooking things that I do know how to make and I give really good tips. And otherwise we're doing challenges or fun things like this. And follow me on Instagram, also at dit.. And until the next video, Bye.